If you can believe it, I first came to Washington, D.C. in 1973 as a freshman at Georgetown University, and we had no mayors. Washington, D.C., as we know it today, is a startup, and I love startups, and to see as our as our um, city has progressed through its adolescence, and it's just now hitting its stride. And so we have so much to be grateful for to be living in a city that's on this tremendous upcline. And it's what I want to talk to you about today. Three simple themes of my speech. Um, the first is our role, your role, both professionally and personally, in the great American drama. We have something intrinsically inherent about being Americans, being this um, startup nation, if you will, that we really live at any one time in one of three acts. Act one, new kid, comes out of nowhere, has this spectacular success. Act two, a very public fall. Act three, a great comeback. And I'm going to talk to you today about how Washington, D.C., and America Online, and even the Washington Capitals are all living through that great American drama. The second thing I want to talk to you about is happiness. Because I'm a student of happiness, because I survived a plane crash in 1982. And, having and finally, I'm going to talk to you about the importance of stick with itness a trait that I believe is uh, misunderstood and really underestimated in terms of life success. One of my favorite quotes was from a Woody Allen movie who said, half a success in life is just showing up. And there's a lot to be said for that, and I think we can look at how that really turns into motivations, especially around our city. So let's talk about the the first three acts. And you'll see in my biography that I was mayor of my town in Florida. And Mayor Williams and I have had several conversations about what it's like to manage a city, manage a community, and try to get it going. Where first, you have to provide the basic needed utilities of safety and security and the fundamental drivers of quality of life to your citizens. It's really true when you look at the turnaround of a city that safety and security and trust and the delivery of fresh water and electricity and having a system that you can move through with efficacy so that you feel comfortable in making investments in is really vital and key. And once you can create that environment where people trust and they feel that they need you, then you can start working on things that are at a higher calling where you can love something. And now when you talk to people who have moved into Washington, D.C., I think the latest statistics that I saw was about 75,000 people had moved back into the city over the last um, 12 months. You hear them say things like, I love living downtown. That is part of that renaissance and really becoming a brand and a infrastructure that is both needed and a similar three-act play, where usually your first round is you have to stabilize an organization, stabilize a city. You have to go out and listen to your consumers through research and hand-to-hand -hand combat, talking to as many people as you can to get that input on what is important to them. And if you stabilize and people start to believe in you, then you can start to move to that second phase, which is revitalization. You get permission to move to, this is what I think we should be, and we will exceed people's expectations. And if you move to that stage, you then can get to stage three, which is stabilize, revitalize, reconceptualize where you can start to offer people the ability to hope and dream about what the future can be. Certainly that's where Washington, D.C. is now today. You see when um, the building and development that's going on downtown, the city has fully developed through those three stages. 
It has reconceptualized itself as not a place of power for government, but really a thriving community where businesses are encouraged to grow, where technology uh, and the internet are at the heart of what this city does, where real estate and building work hand in hand with the government. And it really is one of the great places for people to live. And it's an unbelievable recruitment tool for companies like America Online. I would say that honestly, the, the main recruitment tool that we have as a company is where we work. It's why having a baseball team, a basketball and hockey team, and great football team, having great universities and school systems, having this community be safe and flourishing, helps the spiral to go up as we can recruit people. Having a vibrant real estate business where people feel comfortable and making the investment in their, in their real estate and that they can turn that and upgrade. Uh, having an educational system and a philanthropy underpinning so that people can get activated and give back to their community is also vitally important. And all of those building blocks have come together over the last couple of years. Second thing I want to talk to you about is um, um, someone mentioned to me the other day, they said, you're always smiling. We always see you happy. And why is that? I said, well, I dodged a bullet a long time ago. I was in a plane. It lost its engines and its landing gear. And we, we had a jettison the fuel. And you don't know humility until you're on an airplane that jettisons its fuel. And I made this commitment and promise that if I lived, I would play offense with the rest of my life. And so it takes a lot to get me to not have a smile on my face. And about two years ago, some researchers came to us and asked if we would help sponsor an official research project on the science of happiness. Through all of the research, they came back with four things that make people happy. And so it's so simple, I preach it. I just say, write this down because it's scientifically proven that organizations, that people will be self-actualized. You'll live longer. You'll be healthier. You have better sex lives um, if you follow these four things. And they were simple. The first thing was being an active participant in a community. The second is gratitude. People who say thank you. People who express their love and their commitment and they just say thank you, that they are self-aware of what they have. That means people who volunteer, people who go to church. Those are the happiest people. The third is people that give back. People who are building Habitat for Humanity houses. People who volunteer. People who use their community and show their gratitude by giving back. And the last is a, is a basic human quality of loyalty. That people who love and give back and are committed through good times and bad, are the people that will live the longest. So those are the four things. And what I try to do in my business, in my personal beliefs, with my relationship with my wife and my children, is I try to weave those themes through everything that we do. I'd also like to say that um, sticking with it, um, we're going through some good times now. And, um, I'm now a middle-aged man, and I can say that I've seen really, really good times, and I've seen really, really bad times, and real times on the comeback. And that you shouldn't ever get too high with the high and too low with the lows. Because at any one time in your career, you'll be in that startup mode, that public fall, or that great comeback. And America loves a comeback. I believe that we have a dedicated, hardworking city that loves its community very, very much. Our Washington Capitals hockey team just came out of a lockout. We're a startup. I've been very successful in my career in managing startups and growing them to greatness. I've watched Washington, D.C. go through the same process, and I can personally guarantee you that we are going to build great franchises, but more importantly, ones that you can be very, very proud of right here in downtown D.C. 
thank you so much for your time today, and go out and do great work and make us all proud.